Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories with Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm Fran McNeil, your host, and with me today in the studio is Bernard C. Wright, CPM, Principal and Senior Director of BDJ Ventures, LLC. Bernard, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Fran. I appreciate it. Thank oh, you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. You know, we've had an opportunity to talk before the show of a number of things. And one of the things that really impressed me was we were getting in this conversation about significant people in your life. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping that you could share a little bit more with the audience about a significant person in your life. Sure. Well, it, it all starts for me with my mother. Mm -hmm. um, so that that is the most significant person in my life. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, and my mother was always the one who nurtured and encouraged me. And mm -hmm. she was always about education, even though she was just a high school graduate herself. Wow. She was always about education. So she made sure that we took it very seriously. Uh, she was always encouraging us, and her dream for us was to go to college. Mm -hmm. And so um, I took it very seriously academically. I was fortunate enough to do well mm -hmm. and ended up uh, graduating and had the opportunity to attend the University of Pennsylvania. Ooh, and so great. I attended the University of Pennsylvania at Warden School, and it was there where I met a number of significant people in my life who mm -hmm. are my colleague group now. They're my mm -hmm. peer group. Mm -hmm. And these are individuals who, while we're there, we're just there trying mm -hmm. to get through college mm -hmm. and dealing Undergrads. with all the ups and downs <laughs> and all the adversity but the thing is these people are doing significant things now and mm -hmm. so and these are people that others would recognize if mm -hmm. you think about the president of the national urban league that's mark morell that's someone who was in school wow. when i was there wow. clarence okay. ombris the president of uh, gerard college He's there with me. Okay. These are my fraternity brothers as well. Okay. And there are a number of others, you know, Ron Wilson, who is an executive with Chubb. I mean, these are just so many talented mm -hmm. individuals who I've had the for, been fortunate enough to have interacted with and can still call on to this mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. And so these are people who I really, really feel I would never have had the experience, the opportunity to meet had it not been for my mother. Wow. Who nurtured me wow. and made sure I was grounded religiously, mm -hmm. took school very seriously, mm -hmm. tried to treat people right, mm -hmm. and it afforded me the opportunity to get to one of the most prestigious uh, universities in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely significant. A significant person, mm -hmm. a significant education. Absolutely. What was next after you graduated from Wharton? Well, you know, I was raised to get a good education, do well mm -hmm. in school, and get out and mm -hmm. get a good job. Right. That's exactly right. what I did. Okay. I did all okay. those things. You followed instructions. I followed instructions. Okay. I grew okay. up in the projects in Louisville, so okay. I needed to okay. get a good job. My mother couldn't help me financially, but she was definitely that motivation mm -hmm. behind it. So I was able to get in corporate America right away. I mm -hmm. got involved with the training program, which is an excellent training, uh, excellent uh, professional training ground, mm -hmm. rotational assignments uh, mm -hmm. of increasing significance mm -hmm. in different functional areas, whether it be accounting, finance, mm -hmm. customer service, uh, business mm -hmm. operations, all of those types of things. And that afforded me the opportunity to get that professional grounding right. and understand a little better. But while in my first professional uh, um, employment situation, after about four months, I started taking graduate courses at night. What? at Temple University okay. trying to get my MBA. Okay. I always wanted to be the one that would have all the degrees. Okay. You know, because okay. I never wanted anyone to say that I wasn't qualified to do mm. something. Interesting. Now, okay. that was a rather naive approach, but mm. the thing is I soon realized I didn't need all the degrees. It was just certain ones I wanted to make sure <laughs> I had. And then I would go out and do the rest. But mm. it was that was really sort of how I came how it came about for me. So I got into the professional world. Uh, worked in insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked in uh, telecommunications for a while. Right. And then I worked as a consultant, mm -hmm. traveling the world. And I'm in these boardrooms, and these people are listening to little old me from the projects. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, wow, this is amazing. I, sometimes I can't even believe it. I would pinch mm -hmm. myself and call my mother, Mama, you wouldn't believe this. Mm -hmm. And I'm the only one of my particular pigment mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know what? It's all because of you, and I thank my mother mm -hmm. to this day. Anytime Powerful. I talk with her, I'm grateful that she's still alive, and I talk with her quite frequently, and I never miss the opportunity to tell her thank you and mm -hmm. that I love you because it's all because of her wow. that I am able to do what, I've, what I do and, and been able to do what I've done. Right, It really right. is because of her. So, in significant influence, 
you got into the business world mm -hmm. and you have a CPM behind your name. Where in your corporate experience did that have an impact? Well, I tell you, it, it really has an impact. Um, when, I, when I worked with a consulting firm, mm -hmm. I got involved in a discipline that was really relatively new. It's something that people do, every business does it. It's right. procurement, it's purchasing. Right. Right. But it really is about strategic sourcing. Mm -hmm. doing things in a more strategic way, leveraging spend across the corporation, working with fewer preferred providers, driving inefficiencies out of the business, trying mm -hmm. to uh, um, get the, uh, the most uh, cost efficient products and services for your company. Okay. Um, but the CPM stands for Certified Purchasing Manager. You test for this just like you would to be a certified public accountant. You do okay. the same types of things. I never, I didn't go to college thinking that that would be the case. But that's something that I think you have to be, a, in a, as a professional, you have to be flexible. Right. So this was something that was re required. In, uh, as, as a consultant, I got involved in some sourcing obligations. When I left consulting, I got involved with a pharmaceutical company that was really at the forefront mm -hmm. of strategic sourcing. And one of their requirements was you needed to have this designation okay. because it indicates a higher level of rigor. Right. and understanding of the discipline, just like it is for someone who's coming out and say they want to be an accountant. Mm -hmm. Well, you need that CPM. It's that stamp of approval that shows that you have taken that next step to mm -hmm. get that added level of rigor and discipline and understanding of what you're doing. Okay. And so that really is what that CPM okay. is about. But I've seen it everywhere because every organization has to buy stuff. Absolutely. Whatever that stuff is, right. whether it's goods or services, you have to buy it. Mm -hmm. well, there's a strategic way about going about doing that. And so I worked on the buy side for a number of years in corporate America. And right. when I say buy side, I mean everyone's coming to me. Right. I they're trying to, they're get, trying to you get me to, to bring them on board and buy okay. their stuff. Right, right. And so now things now, have flipped. Right. Now I'm on the other side. I'm on that sales side. I'm an right. entrepreneur. So right. I'm approaching them. But the good thing is I have that added insight. I know what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know Terrific. the verbiage, I know the lingo, I know right. exactly what they're right. looking for. Strategically, I know what they're doing. And mm -hmm. so it's really a matter of me being able to appropriately influence them and have them understand that I understand what you're seeking. It's not really about, for me, getting the maximum amount of profit. It's, try, it's trying to provide them with the best total value. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter if you, if you think about it. It doesn't matter if you offer the cheapest price, if you're not reliable. It doesn't right. matter if yeah. it's the cheapest price and it's not quality. Mm -hmm. You know, you see what I'm saying. Right. So you have to bring all of that to the table, and it's not just about price, price. And, and a lot of times companies will try to focus you in on that, particularly if you're involved in a commodity business. Oh, sure, which is sure. what it's I'm in involved. their interest, saying, right. Well, yeah. no, I just want the cheapest this or that. Right. Well, yeah. you could get that, mm -hmm. but if they're not reliable and they don't show up, then you have a problem. So... When you think about the progression of education, corporate America, and entrepreneurship, what are some of your takeaways if you were to advise your son? Yes. Or sons? Well, I, I do have two <laughs> sons, so that's good. But, but I would tell you, you know, for me, it really is about understanding. There's nothing wrong with working in corporate America. I did it, and mm -hmm. I think it was valuable training ground for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I grew up with an inkling to be an entrepreneur way back when. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the projects, as I mentioned, and for me to get that extra money, I would go to the maintenance center. You may not know what that is, but there's a maintenance center in the projects. I would rent mm -hmm. the lawnmowers and then go oh, around wow. and cut people's grass. Okay. That's how I made extra money. That is entrepreneurial. So it's well, like okay. I've always done okay. it. So throughout my life, and even in corporate America, I was always doing something because I knew I had that inkling. But for me, working in corporate America, excellent training. Excellent in terms of understanding and and just understanding the necessity of being able to get along with others, mm -hmm. working in a team mm -hmm. environment, Agreed. being able to Agreed. influence others, mm -hmm. uh, learning how to build coalitions and all of that mm -hmm. to accomplish the appropriate objective, mm -hmm. uh, the assigned objective. These these things, these skills are very very important. But as an entrepreneur, it really is on you. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you don't get up that day and don't want to work, okay. then guess you could do that. Right. But you won't make any money either if you're not <laughs> you doing eat. and you won't eat. <laughs> so it really is on you. And there is something that is liberating about being able to call your own shots. Mm -hmm. there, there's nothing like that. But it is a challenge. It's not easy. It's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt about that. But it's really very, very important. And really, our country is built on that entrepreneurial uh, yes. uh, spirit. It yes. really is. Mm -hmm. And so for us and for me personally, it is something that I'm committed to. Mm -hmm. I'm 
putting all my energies into and mm -hmm. I have my moments I have my <laughs> days so I can't sit here and say that it's all uh, uh, really very nice and is you know this is just gravy and icing on the cake and all those mm -hmm. euphemisms you might use but when you get a win it is so fulfilling it is so gratifying because you know that guess what I convinced this particular client mm -hmm. to work with me right that is so important and I've been fortunate enough to have some good names on my roster right. now it's just about building the business even more so that's what we're trying to do so let's talk just briefly about your current business mm -hmm. um, and how do you help your clients by doing what you do? And I think you have some samples yes, just to I, I do. show us. Um, well, my business is about providing uh, customized promotional products, branded mm -hmm. merchandise to help these companies spread their, their image to not only their employees, the general public, mm -hmm. their existing customers, and potential customers. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, every company does it. Mm -hmm. uh, they will brand their, their product, brand mm -hmm. their companies in some way, form, or fashion. And one of the ways to do that is through products, promotional right. products. It's a relatively inexpensive way to do that versus, say, television advertising or right. what have you. So right. we have a number of products, and these are just some samples. This is a bag, just a gift bag. Uh, that's logoed. This is something that we do. Uh, and then we have all types of bags that we can provide. Uh, journals like this. Uh, this is a relatively high-end journal that's uh, embossed. We do these types of uh, journals. This is a relatively inexpensive item. Everyone has a smartphone. Mm -hmm. There's a smartphone wallet. You take it out, it adheres to the back of your phone. Mm -hmm. You can put your credit cards or license in it. Mm -hmm. And it's a way to avoid carrying a big wallet or a big purse if this is so right. something you want to do. So the range of products varies from the least expensive to most expensive. We can do pens, cups, mugs, up to luggage, customized luggage, oh and anything goodness. in between. Okay. We do everything, all types of wearables. Here's a wearable. This is a winter jacket. It has... Uh, Oh, the the Boss logo right. -boss. here. Mm -hmm. And so this is something that we do, and we do all types of wearables, polo shirts, uh, T-shirts, anything like that, caps. Mm -hmm. And this is another bag that we provide, and we can certainly customize that with anyone's logo. And if you think about it, when someone's uh, carrying something or wearing something very nice that's branded, you, you, you see it and you're like, where did you get that? Right. I want everyone to know they got it from <laughs> BDJ Ventures LLC, and we are here to help Fair you. Enough. So this is how we try Fair to help enough. and help those companies brand their merchandise and, and their companies in the minds of the general public. That's what we do. Mm, powerful. Bernard, as we wrap up, you have really covered my key points, significant business and results. And you're leaving us with, I think, a formula to help our listeners and other entrepreneurs really focus their energy for action. And a lot of it, what I'm hearing, is about integrity, um, it's about relationships, and it's about creating those results that help others. Yeah. Um, very quickly, because I think it is an important part of your background, how do you give back in addition to serving others as an entrepreneur? Well, I, I there's a, a project that I've actually been blessed enough to have won the past couple of years, and it's the providing the educational uh, tote bags for students in the center city uh, Philadelphia public schools. This mm -hmm. is the Read to Me Early Literacy Program. I know mm -hmm. how important it is in the lives of minority communities. So this is a way to give back, and then I go and read to those schools Ooh, as well. Cool. Uh, cool. I led the sports basketball organization in Sheltonham, a township I used to live in. Uh, mm -hmm. They needed leadership. I got involved, and as we were talking off camera, I, I, I walk around in warm suit and cat, but I would enlist the service of people who I know, who mm -hmm. are judges, attorneys, doctors, all of them. They're walking around looking like me, but those kids would clearly understand. You can do this. We're just regular people like you. We were kids right. like that, we were but kids. we got our education. So I want to make sure that education is very important. And from a business perspective, uh, and so when they see those individuals, they know it's important. And from a business perspective, I want to be in a position where if we have success as a business, we can gainfully employ others. And we mm -hmm. were fortunate enough in the evolution of the company to be able to do that when we operated gift shops in African American museums. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can evolve to that where we're doing this in this particular space as well, the branded merchandise premiums and promotional space. Terrific. Well, that is a wonderful way to end our interview. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate the energy that you brought to us. And I want to share again with our audience that my guest today was Bernard Seabright, 
uh, principal and senior director of BJD Ventures BDJ. LLC, BDJ Ventures LLC. And I'm Fran McNeil, host of Significant TV, Significant Stories, and clearly Significant Entrepreneurs. Thank, Thank you, Bernard. Thank you.